What's up guys? Today we're going to go over how to make a kelp farm. So the design is relatively simple. Uh, we just have these growing chambers right here where you have the kelp in here that is then cut by pistons. Uh, the pistons are just on a timer, which I have right here. This is about 17 minutes. Um, and the reason I'm using a timer and not observers is because I think it just looks better. Because if you're using observers, it's kind of like it ends up being like three blocks tall or something. And I just wanted to have something that looked a little bit better in my base or whatever. So did it on a timer. Uh, it goes and it cuts those down. The kelp floats up here. This water is flowing. It's hard to tell with the shaders, but the two water blocks here are flowing. So the kelp floats all the way to the top and then it goes into the hoppers, which then collect onto the side. These are all facing into each other. And then this goes down all the way into the chest where you have the kelp. Um, I have another identical one over here. It does the exact same thing. Um, it's on the same timer where this redstone just goes all the way underground here. You can also add as many of these chambers as you want. I only did two, but you can easily have like 10 if you really need a lot of kelp. Um, because if you're using like kelp for uh, fuel or something, then you'll need a lot. So you can add as many of these as you want. So with that, let's jump right in. All right, so for the materials, I have broken them up into the different parts of the farm. So the top row right here is the timer that you can use in order to tell the pistons to cut down all of the kelp for all of your chambers. So you only need to make one of them. And that is four hoppers, one observer, four comparators, four furnaces, and the furnaces are mainly just for lag purposes. Um, and then you'll also need a decent amount of redstone dust, redstone repeaters, and torches. Um, and that is because I can't really give you good numbers because it depends on how you build it. Because um, I built it like this, but you can easily, you know, move stuff around. Um, and it also depends on how you have the rest of your farm set up. So it really just depends. Uh, and then for the second row, just, just these four things, is the actual chamber. So you'll need 15 pistons, one chest, 27 hoppers, and 15 kelp. And that's because this from here all the way to this side is 15 blocks across. And then you have hoppers that go from here all the way down into the chest. Um, you don't need to start with 15 kelp, but it just makes it easier so you can plant them all at the same time. And then the rest of them are just blocks that you can build with. I mean, I chose these ones, but it doesn't really matter what you do. The only functional um, block that you need is that the block behind the pistons have to be opaque. Um, and that's so that the signal can carry into the pistons. If you make it like glass or something transparent, it won't work. But that is the only functional requirement there. Otherwise, you can build the rest of the farm however you'd like. All right, so for the beginning, we'll build the growing chamber so that we can kind of map out the space of our farm. So the way I did it in the demonstration, I kind of had it underground, but I'm going to do it on the surface this time. So we'll start by placing the chest that we want. This was one block away, like one block in between uh, with these little edges here. So these will go up by three blocks and put it next to your chest, one block away, and then do four of them. One of them is another block away from the first one, just like this. And then we go 15 blocks that direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 blocks away, 15 blocks in between. Sorry about that. Yeah, 15 blocks in between. And then we go up 3, and then we do another one up 3 like that. So with this, uh, in the demonstration, this is where I had my stream lights, but it can, of course, be anything that you want. And then I think I had quartz bricks here. So just kind of make a little outline like that. Then the middle is grass, and this is where your kelp will go. Um, so it has to be grass. I, I mean, it can be whatever kelp can grow on, actually. I just use grass. And then now we'll go up uh, another eight blocks. Um, and I'm not going to use... Yeah, let's use the pillar. Why not? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll do that on all four sides again. Okay, so now what we do is we place glass on this first layer um, in the back. So I'll say the shroom lights are the front of my growing chamber. This is the side that the pistons will be on. So in that side, and I mean, I guess on both sides you can do it if you want. Um, we'll place glass just on the first block. Like this. And then we're going to place pistons on the second row facing into the chamber. Um, make sure they're just normal pistons or else the sticky pistons will grab the glass. And we'll just put it all across that. And then now we can go up 
with the glass until we get to the second to uh, last one. So go up to here uh, and leave the, the last two blocks. You can go all the way up uh, in the front if you want, but the back is going to have to have uh, the hoppers in one of those spaces. So yeah, on the sides and on the um, in the front, you can go all the way up, but in the back, just go up with uh, two blocks to spare. This. And I'll just build the front just to get that out of the way. And one more. Okay. So now, on top of these glass blocks right here, we're going to want to put the hoppers. Um, and make the hoppers face to the corner that your chest is on and put it in the back. So like in this case, my chest is on this side of the chamber, not on that side. And then this is the back side, so I'll point them into this corner right here. Um, and yeah, in this one, place the hopper facing down. It's just easier if you start it like that. And then hold shift to uh, place the hoppers facing into that one and make sure that they all face into each other. Like this, okay. Uh, and then on this side, we will build a little ring. Um, and actually in the demonstration, I have these as glass. And then I just built two blocks around the hoppers like this. And this is basically to contain the water and make sure that the kelp doesn't accidentally float through the hopper area. Um, it's rare that it does that, but it isn't like it's not impossible for it to do that. Um, and if you're also paranoid about the kelp like floating too high, like for some reason if it gets like a boost and it like comes out, you can add another layer. Um, another layer of blocks just so it doesn't like fly up but it's usually not super necessary um at least not in the back in the front maybe but it shouldn't be super necessary and then we will take these hoppers we will break this entire pillar um so sorry if you made it like out of obsidian or something um it's just easier to build it out of something else first and then i'm gonna hold shift and it's in survival it'd probably be easier to just like build up a pillar of blocks and do this instead of doing what i'm doing every single time then make sure that all the hoppers face into the chest and the easiest way to do it is just place blocks on the chest and then hold shift and place all the blocks into each other all the hoppers um, and then you can just double check um, and actually the easiest way to check is you can put up an item in this last one and make sure that eventually that it gets into the chest and that will be a good way to check if all your hoppers are facing into the right direction and it takes a minute but we have our furnace so that everything's good Next, what we want to do is we want to put the water on this topmost uh, strip right here, so on this block, and only on this part. You do not want to put the water on top of the hoppers, um, and this is because you want the water to flow this way into the hoppers. So what we do is we just place water here, and we just do it all the way across, specifically not putting it on top of the hoppers. Um, and yeah, so make sure you have flowing water. It's hard to tell with the shaders, um, but you can tell by this like little line right here. And it goes all the way down. Then what we want to do is we want to place kelp all the way up. And this is to make it where all of these blocks down here are source blocks. Uh, and that's pretty important because if you don't do that, um, if the kelp stock never grows all the way to the top before the pistons kill it, then the items will get stuck somewhere in the middle here. So you want to make sure that you do this. Um, and this is just because kelp makes uh, downward, downward flowing water into source blocks when it goes into the, the block. I don't know why, but it does and it's pretty convenient actually. So we just place it all the way like this. You could just as easily just place your 15 kelp um, and let them grow all the way, but that is pretty uh, time consuming. So we do this. This is also a good way to like test the pistons, make sure they're gonna work properly. And there we go, okay. So now we have all of our kelp there. Um, so now what we need to do is do the timer. So, in order to hook up the timer, we need to have something to hook it up to. So now we start doing the redstone stuff. So I'll grab all my stuff. So place opaque blocks behind these pistons right here um, in the same horizontal level as them. And then place redstone on top of those. 
and you should only have 15 blocks across and this is because we're going to put the repeater somewhere right here um just to make it a little bit you know more manageable so it's not like over here we have to signal strengthen it a bunch of times but if you have more blocks than 15 then maybe you put this repeater more in the middle and this is because it will run out of signal strength as it gets uh, closer to the end here so yeah if you have like 20 or something then you can put the repeater here instead and it should reach all of them uh, but just be mindful of that um, and I'm going to do the timer just over here in this little area right here. But when you have multiple of these chambers, just, you know, be aware that you're going to have to have the timer somewhere, but you only need to have one. So you can put it like underground or something if that's more convenient. So I'm just going to bring this down. Okay. So now we need to build the timer. All right. So first we put two hoppers facing into each other like this. We put an opaque block um, on one end of them. The, it will go this way. So whichever way you want um, to be the front, make sure you go the opposite way of that. Um, I'm gonna use this block because it'll bug me. And then put comparators facing away from the opaque block. Put another opaque block. Put redstone torches on top of that. On top of the comparators, put two more hoppers facing into each other uh, like that. And make sure that they're facing into each other. That's pretty important. And then on top of this block, you put comparators facing away. And then we put furnaces on top of that one. And we put furnaces on top of um, those sets of hoppers too. And this is because it will disable the hoppers uh, check to check for items on top of it, which helps pretty tremendously with lag. Um, and furnaces are also opaque blocks. So you need to have an opaque block on top of these ones anyways. So you might as well just, you know, do furnaces and kill two birds with one stone there. So then what we want to do is we want to fill it with items. Um, so grab five stacks and one item of anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, as long as it can stack up to 64. Make sure it can stack up to 64. Um, because if it stacks up to 16, then it will just, it just as if you had 16 um, stuff in there every single time instead of 64. On the bottom one, put one item in there. And it will just, you know, filter back and forth. On the top one, fill it all the way up. Um, and this makes a timer that I think is about 80 seconds, um, if I'm not mistaken, or somewhere in that ballpark. Um, and it is great and all, but it's a little too short still for the kelp to grow adequately. So now what we do is we place blocks right next to the hoppers here, um, and then the same horizontal line. And we do it on both sides, and then we come out here somewhere. Um, somewhere place a block here for a torch. Um, it doesn't really matter where. This is all just redstone, so you can move all this however you'd like. But we're going to make a loop. Um, and if you want to make it exactly how I'm doing it, I'm just going to put this here. Uh, so three blocks away on this side, and then make this three wide, because we're going to make a repeater loop. Uh, and it does also. All right. So torch here, torch here. And then this goes in. This is also in the clock video. Um, so if you're curious how this actually works, um, you can watch that. And then we're gonna make the loop and just do it like this. Super common repeater loop. I'm gonna put them all on the highest time. And then we hook this up to the torches. And then we just give it a little seed pulse there. Um, and this makes the hopper clock from whatever 80, 80 seconds or whatever it was down to or up to about 17 minutes uh, which is pretty long but it gives the kelp a long time to grow so that when the pistons actually do fire there's a lot of kelp for it to collect um you can fine tune the time if you want so say you want to make this shorter then you probably don't need to let it grow as long because if you let it grow too long and this happens so that they're all at the top then there's not gonna be any more growing happening um so if you make it shorter, then you'll probably want to shorten the timer. There's two ways to do this. I think the easiest way is you just take out items um, from this hopper right here, this hopper set. Um, because the less items that are in here, the less time it takes for it to switch. Um, or you can just reduce some of the length here. But this uh, has a pretty tr like a profound effect on it. So I would recommend taking items out. And plus then you don't have to use as many items on it. But with that said, now what we do is we put an observer facing into one of the torches. It doesn't matter which one. And this is just to make it where it gives you a signal pulse instead of like a sustained. 
Because what happens when this switches is that the torches just switch. So this one will turn off and this one will turn on for a while. But we only want a like short pulse. So this essentially shortens that pulse. We put a repeater with length four, which actually, because this is in the way, I'm gonna, well, we can actually just break that. We do a repeater of length four, and this is to make sure that the observer doesn't fire twice on you. Um, or rather the signal doesn't fire twice because the observer will fire twice, but this essentially mediates that. And then we bring this signal up to our pistons. And you might need to put a repeater somewhere in the middle because uh, I don't think it, from here all the way up to here it'll reach. If we do that. And then I can test it by just simply throwing a torch here. And then, yeah, now we see all of our kelp <laughs> flies up. And yeah, some of them got caught up here temporarily, but the hoppers will still be able to pull them in. So it's a little un unnerving, um, and I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to put another layer here, or like a ceiling or something, but it's usually unnecessary. Um, yeah, most of the items go in, and now they're going to go into the chest, as you can see here. Um, some of the items will get stuck in the glass here, though a lot of the time they'll actually work their way out and float up, but not always. Um... One way to mediate that is you can make this water chamber a little bit more thick, but the problem is the running water up here needs to be modified. But usually these do work themselves out, so it's not a huge issue. Um, and even then it's like you lose like one or two out of however many you actually end up getting every single time. So it's not a huge loss there. All right, guys, I'll be for this episode. Let me know down in the comments if you have any issues or suggestions or anything like that. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.